Oh, I feel like Nefertiti already. Okay, she's ready. Hey everybody, it's me, Miss Cracker, and I'm gonna take you from my first five to my last five. First, I generally wake up at eight in the morning, which means like eight plus four half hour snoozes which I deserve, by the way, because I work hard. So at 10, when I finally roll out of bed, the first thing I do is self-care with caffeine. My caffeine drink of choice is a nice piping hot coffee from a French press. I grind up the beans, I put it in the French press, and it's just the freshest a cup of coffee can possibly be without a whole espresso machine. <laughs> I couldn't get the grinder plug out of the uh, wall when I was a kid. So I was like, I don't want to touch the cord. And I grabbed a fork to pry it out and I fried myself. So whenever I'm grinding my beans every morning, that terror of being electrocuted is also kind of a pick me up. You know what I mean? <laughs> The next thing I do is read the times. It helps me know what is going on in the world because when I do shows of any kind, I wanna make sure that I'm talking about things that are important. And if you don't know what's going on in the world, you don't know what's important to talk about right now. A lot of people say that the news will drive you down, but it is a real um, blessing to know all the stories that are going on in the world around you. It's discouraging to read the times once, but it's empowering to read it every day. The third thing that I do when I wake up is get my body ready to do drag. And that means I use a uh, Hydro Boost soap from Neutrogena in the shower to get my skin all supple and prepared. I use like a nice hydrating shampoo. Oh, there is no special shampoo that I use. It's just the cheapest. I have the hair care routine of like a college frat boy and I accept that. I use a Dove body soap to make sure that my skin is prepared to be duct taped because that is going to happen. Um, and uh, I put on some moisturizer, if I'm lucky, something from Sunday Riley. If I'm not lucky, something from a gift bag. <laughs> something from the hotel. Then I put on my primer. And this is the armor that you need to put on your body before you start tormenting it, which is basically what the whole process of drag is. I have been told that a cold shower is very empowering and that it gives you fire breath and prepares you to greet the day. I wouldn't know because I would never, okay? Hot weather, cold weather, anything in between, I am going to take a hot shower no matter what. And the reason why is because I need to soften my beard, sorry to break the illusion, so that I can uh, razor my, like, my nice Eastern European beard away. That's what I need to do. And there's no better way to do that than by heating up your skin and moisturize so that your skin has the, uh, like everything that it needs to defend itself against the blades. The fourth thing that I do is get up in makeup, okay? That means putting on that last layer of primer and uh, starting to get my whole face blanked down to nothing with foundation so that we can build a brand new face right on top of it. That's why it's called a foundation, my dear, because you're gonna build on top of it. When it comes to foundation, the only thing that I care about is opaque. <laughs> if, as long as my foundation is opaque, it can have carcinogens in it, I don't care. I am just going to spread that grease paint all over my face. I think I use the same stuff that they use for painting the lines in the highway. You know what I mean? <laughs> just, just strong, that's the only thing that I care about. For everything else, when it comes to the powders and all of that, I'm going to use something that is, uh, that is very pigmented and blends beautifully and shows money. But um, that's all the stuff that shows, okay? The, the, the base is, is cheap and strong. It was Alyssa Edwards who told me to start using setting spray and it really changed my life. I was like, I don't need setting spray. She's matte, she doesn't need it. Alyssa was like, but you do. And it has made such a difference in my life. I actually do use uh, Anastasia. Anastasia, Anastasia Beverly Hills. Um, and uh, it's uh, the dewy set and it's really gorgeous. I'm also looking over, I do use Skindinavia. Um, which has a great uh, setting spray. Doing my beauty routine has been a lifesaver for me. There's two possible things I would say for my, my 
last beauty tip. And uh, first of all, I listen to Vacation by GRL because it is obnoxious and my job is to be obnoxious. So that's what gets me hyped for the day. <laughs> um, the most important beauty tip that you can possibly hear is leave the house. And um, I think no matter how you get yourself up, it doesn't matter if you don't go show uh, that beauty to the world and share it with other people. This is why we uh, drag queens make ourselves beautiful is uh, not just for the internet, but so that someone walking to the grocery store encounters something that they may have never seen before and they get a sense that there's beauty in the world. And that's what I want to create. So that's the most important tip of beauty, showing it off. Yeah, we got the we got the pink mask to go with everything else. You know what I mean? And she's ready. She has her accessories all set. Yeah, I I will will, will wear a mask and go out there and say hello to people in the world. And I definitely give more drama in my eyes now that I'm going to go out with a mask a lot of the time. And uh, I've been doing a lot of smoky eyes to show you that she can be sensual. You know what I mean? It means wearing uh, the big hair and brighter colors and stuff like that because uh, your voice is going to be muffled. Sometimes. Sometimes and this part of your face is gonna be hidden and you gotta make up for it with a little something else. I've told you the first five things that I do during the day and those are just to prepare for trying to make the world a, a more beautiful and more just place. And uh, during the day, if it's a really great day, I'll get to film a little bit of my advice column that's coming out soon um, and then uh, attend a protest or a vigil or a rally to make my voice heard and uh, demand the changes that the world needs right now. Th things are scary, but they're even scarier when you don't know what's going on. There's nothing m more scary than being in the dark. I don't think ignorance is bliss. I think it's a really terrifying state to be in. Especially right now, it's important for everyone to show up. It is such an important moment to be going out to vigils and protests and rallies and showing as much of your face as you as you can, being loud and standing up for what's right. So um, sometimes that means going out and doing that in drag because I just want to make my voice as loud and uh, make myself as visible as possible while I'm saying, let's make a change for things. I will tell you one thing about all of this work. It is very sweaty. <laughs> and so by the end of the day, I am completely beaten up and greasy and worn out. And uh, this rag doll is really ready to get out of drag. <laughs> like no matter how good your makeup is, at some point she's gonna start uh, caking up and shifting around on your face. You're gonna see those cracks appear like in the desert and uh, you know, that's when you know it's time to uh, move to that later part of the day. It's time for Dracula to go back in the coffin. <laughs> the very first thing that I do um, when I get home is strip completely out of my drags. And that means about 10 pounds of titties and padding and 20 pounds of boots and garments and at least another five pounds up in this wig. So uh, that's the very first thing I do. Fourth, as soon as I take my stuff off, I, I hang it up because uh, I know if I don't do it then, it's never going to happen. You know what I mean? I'm like, that will sit on the floor forever. So as I don't even let it hit the floor. It goes right on the hanger. Well, I told you it's a sweaty business, so that's the only way it's going to dry properly, too. <laughs> Third, I remove everything that is not me. I do micellar water on a makeup removing pad and I... Uh, remove everything that way. Then I use another pad to get the last of everything off. And then I wash with the Neutrogena Hydro Boost. That's just to prepare for the shower because I don't want all of that stuff, all that gunk going down my drain. There's a terrible history with that and we don't need to repeat any of those accidents. <laughs> it feels very cathartic to take off your makeup because um, you've, been, you've been looking at one face all day long and you start to believe that you are that person and uh, you are that soldier, you are that queen. And then uh, when you take that makeup off, you're like, oh, I also need to remember I'm a human being um, that needs rest and that needs to be taken care of in order to do all that 
queenly stuff. I usually take two showers in a day because of drag and I want to get all the drag off of me and I don't want it all over my linens. I get wet, I turn the water off, I soap up and then uh, rinse off, turn the water on and rinse off again. I don't take any more than 10 minutes. I am very aware that I am draining the water from the, the whale's fishbowl, you know what I mean? So I'm like uh, very conservative about it. Then I'm ready after I've taken my shower to do the next step. Second, moisturize and uh, medicate so that I am ready to go to bed. Um, I have really, I want everyone to know this, I have a really terrible battle with acne I have for my entire life. So um, I start by putting on some Sunday Riley good jeans to turn back time. Sure! Once that's settled in, I put on um, uh, my skin medications and for anyone who's out there that was told that skin problems stop at 18 and feels lied to, I'm here to tell you, you're not alone, okay? Everyone struggles with it. Okay, time to check in with a friend on the phone. Oh, that's right. I don't have friends. <laughs> Before I close out my day, I often check in with my dear wife, Juju. Uh, Juju B is like, uh, just like, such an optimistic person and she believes that everything's um, going to turn out all right. And I love that she's willing to be wrong like that. Um, <laughs> I love her optimism. And so I always check in with her just to hear the words, it's gonna be okay. And uh, things are gonna change and we're gonna get through this and the world's gonna be a better place. I try to end the day by reading a book and it can calm you and remind you that there are uh, things that are going on that are much bigger than you. So yeah, I read a book until I pass out, which because I'm 36, is about five minutes flat, and that's the end of my day. <laughs> when you are on national TV in quarantine, you can go what they call shack wacky, where I'm from, you get cabin fever, you go crazy. And being able to make something beautiful um, appear out of nowhere uh, through garments, through humor, through makeup, that has been a lifesaver. I literally don't know where I would be without drag. My final message, if I had to tell everyone something right now, it's that you never know what's going to happen next. We have certainly learned that in these times. And that if you have any way of just living fully today, it would be by reminding yourself that you are not promised tomorrow. So if you have a disagreement with someone, fix it. If you have a problem with yourself, accept it. And if you think you can't change something, try it. Because you don't know what tomorrow may bring and you wanna be able to say you tried your best and really lived. Bye, thank you.